Finally, it's oatmeal stout time. Okay, so, uh, this is a, a quite a long video in the making. Uh, I brewed this brew on the 5th of November, so that was five weeks ago. Weeks ago. Um, uh, I wanted to do a grains glass, obviously, you know, doing a grains glass, you, you normally got your two week brewing period, or fermenting period, your two week, two week conditioning, so there's usually like a month that lapses between the start of the video and end of the video, sorry. Um, so, yeah, this is taking a bit longer because we're now into the sixth week, I think, yeah, so, you know, it's nicely conditioned, so it should be really good. Anyway, so, um, I'm going to get into the brew day video. Um, this was kind of an impromptu video, impromptu brew to be honest. I was originally going to do a New England IPA and at the last minute changed my mind. I had a load of dark grains lying around, came up with an oatmeal stout recipe that I kind of, it just fitted. I had the right ingredients that fitted an oatmeal stout, so I just decided to brew it. Um, and uh, yeah, just went ahead with it. And I wanted a dark ale, so that's why I decided not to do the New England IPA. Um, I actually did the New England IPA today, which I filmed. Um, I might just put the brew day video up. No, actually, no, I'm going to do a grain to glass on that one as well because I'm going to do the whole dry hopping experience as well. Anyway, this is the oatmeal stout. Here's the brew day. Enjoy. And I'll see you at the end of the brew day uh, where I'm going to do a taste test so and see what it comes out like. Okay, so oatmeal stout. Um, I've got the grain bill chucked into the mash tun already. Um, one thing you'll notice from uh, just trying to check what temperature I need to get the strike water up to. So that's why we've got thermometer in the in the grain at the moment. Um, so anyway, so one thing you'll notice is that I've got. Primarily uh, the flaked oats on top, um, so there's quite a lot of flaked oats going into this recipe, 900 uh, grams, almost a kilo. Um, so last time I did a recipe with a shitload of flaked oats in it was my Mango Lassi IPA. And the one problem I kept on having during that recipe was uh, as I was uh, recirculating um, and as I was um, sparging, um, I kept on having a problem with uh, stuck barges. Did a bit of research into it. Had a look at other people doing, you know, like uh, New England IPAs, all that kind of stuff. And one thing I kept on mentioning was to make sure that the um, oats that you put into your grain bill uh, stay on top of the um, grain bed, which is one thing I'm going to do here. So I'm not going to stir this up. I'm going to underlet so the water will come in underneath um, and try and keep those oats on the top because obviously they'll get soggy and. Um, that you know, they'll become different to what the uh, um, the rest of the grain is going to be like. Um, become more soggy and stodgy, so they're more likely to form a stuck sparge. So anyway, that's what I'm going to try and do this time. So uh, I've got in the, the recipe. That's me dropping a book on the floor in the background. Lovely. Um, so this is the recipe that I'm doing: oatmeal stout. Uh, you can see here I've got 4.5 kilos of Maris Otter, 200 grams of roasted barley, 500 grams of black malt, 200 grams of flaked barley, 500 grams of chocolate wheat malt, and uh, 900 grams of flaked oats. Um, so, uh, three hop additions, one at 60 minutes, one at 30 minutes, one at 15 minutes, um, all with Halatawa, wherever you pronounce it, I hope that's correct. Um, yeah, going for um, a usual amount of, you know, aiming for like 23 litres, normally get like 22 litres, 21 maybe. Uh, I think the, out, the ABV of this estimated is 6.3, is that correct? Yeah, I think it's about 6.3. Um, so yeah, I've got, you know, not long, about another 10 minutes before I reach my strike temperature. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, and then I'm going to dough in. Uh, and get ready to get the mash to sit for half an hour uh, and then I will um, recirculate for half an hour. Okay, so underletting. Just turn it on. Cool.
very boring to have as a video to be honest but yeah you should be able to see some water coming into the mash to the grain bed in a minute here we go you can start to see some water soaking up in the corner water in the uh, HLT is going down I put 16 litres of water in the HLT um, measured it this time as well which I'll show you uh, once we've got some, uh, once we've got the grain bed sorted, uh, the, with the mash sorted, I'll show you uh, what I measured the uh, quantity that went into the HLT with, which is a pretty cool little gadget. Um, anyway, I'll let this, uh, let the underletting finish because it's not a very interesting thing to show you guys. Um, and then the next step will be uh, me moving out, showing you what I measured my. Uh, um, Water that went in the HLT with. So, <clears throat> here we are filling up my HLT. Um, currently, the way I fill it up is I've got a hose pipe that runs from the tap uh, in the garden. Um, water's more than five for to be used as drinking water. It comes from the same water pipes that might provide to my kitchen taps. So that's all fine. Um, and as you can see, what I've got here is I've got something um, made by a company called Gardena. Yeah, Gardena. Uh, I can't remember the name of this. Um, I'll put a link to it um, below the uh, video. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's measuring the literage that's going into my HLT, which is absolutely brilliant because before I was doing all of this stuff by um, guesswork. Um, now it's given me more of an idea about how much um, I'm getting into my HLT, which is absolutely brilliant. So yeah, really pleased with it. 15 quid on eBay. Really good little contraption. Measuring the mash pH. Uh, let's have a look. So we're at 5.74. So I'm going to add a tiny, tiny little bit of lactic acid. Uh, reduce that down to 5.2. So I've got one tiny capful. This like half of this cap, not even half of this capful, was filled. Um, so let's uh, pull this in. Yeah. I'm going to give this a bit of a stir. Uh, one thing you'll probably notice with this is my intentions of having the uh, flake boats sitting on the top of the grain bed. It doesn't really work very well because you've got to, you know, once you stir everything up, it's mixed in with the rest of the uh, rest of the grain, so you don't end up with uh, that particular grain sitting on top. So we'll see what happens and when we get to doing recirculation of sparging. So. Uh, let's drop down to something like 5.29, 5.25, 5. Point, oops, gone down a bit low there. 5.5, 5. 5. 5. Climbing up a little bit, so it looks like I need to mix it because it's, in each area seems to be a bit inconsistent. So, one last stir. Hopefully, we can get an even pH reading. So we're on 5.14, 14, 15, it's good enough, 5.17, 16, 14, okay, so it's, you know, 5.15, it's close enough to 5.2 for me, I'm happy with that, seems a bit inconsistent in places, it's 5.16, 17, so we're, I'm happy it's close to 5.2, so it's good, so I think we're okay, right, let's close this up. Still waiting for my strike water to come out to temperature uh, or the recirculation water. So, uh, you know, when it's there, we we'll about another 10 minutes. I'll uh, get the recirculation on the go. Recirculating. Uh, so, it's really cold in the, um, in the brew shed today. Uh, temperature of my mash dropped down quite a bit uh, during. Uh, first half an hour. Uh, so I'm going to try and bring it up to 70 degrees now so you can see it's starting to climb nicely uh, as it goes through the um, Holmes coil. Which is good, I'm happy with that. So we go going up to 63.5 already so temperature's already rising up nicely. Uh, so I'm going to leave this to recirculate now for uh, 45 minutes uh, and then I get ready to start sparging. One thing I um, I'm pointing out during this recirculation is that uh, we're now 
10 minutes of recirculation, so I've got another 35 minutes left. Um, but I've not had any problem with uh, with the flow, the flow of the walk going through the uh, pipes and the um, recirculation homes coil. It's been fine, there's been no stacks barges, so, you know, um, not had a problem with the flake boats causing a stuck sparge so far. So far we're looking good. Um, which is cool. Sparging. Trying to keep the flow really gentle. As you can see. Got the runoff. And since it's now three o'clock in the afternoon drinking a salted caramel porter which I did in a previous video and I've just recently found out that I only need to send 11 bottles off instead of the 16 I'd originally planned, so I've got 5 bottles to drink myself. Oh yeah! So here we are, uh, the boil's just rolling boil as all the hot break has just happened. Um, uh, I'm here with the first hop edition, uh, I've got 30 grams of Hurlatawa hops. I'm going to chuck in. Um, I'll get my spoon in a minute and give it a stir. Um, so after I finished sparging and uh, finished the runoff, I did a grav initial gravity reading. Um, so I've got 27 litres in the or 26 litres in the boil kettle. Um, I've got a starting or a pre-boil gravity of um, 1.055. Um, I'm looking for 1.064 when I get to the end of the boil. So, so far we're looking like we're going to be on target. So it's looking quite good. Uh, so I'm going to give this a stir. Um, I've got a second hop addition to do at 30 minutes. Um, and then another one to do at 15 minutes along with some protoflock. Um, so I will see you in half an hour. 30 minute hop additions. Another 30 grams of hurler tower. Going in the boil kettle. Uh, this time I've got my stir spoon ready. This is very rare, isn't it? Um, okay, cool. So, yeah, 30 minute hop additions over. So that's 60 grams of hurler tower that's gone in so far. Um, aiming for an IBU of 25. So this isn't going to be, obviously being a stout, it's not going to be very hoppy. Um, so, yeah, another hop addition in 15 minutes, which is another 15 grams of hurler tower and a protoflock. And then we get ready for flame out. Okay, 15 minute hop additions, or 15 minute additions. So we got uh, 15 grams of hurler tower getting chucked in. Uh, we've got one protoflock tablet going in, which is froth. I love the way this froths up, isn't it? Uh, let's give that a stir. Good. Another 15 minutes and it's time for flame out. Just take, gonna take a swig on my Mango Lassie IPA. Oh yeah, good stuff. Anyway, uh, back in 15 minutes. Okay, so boil's finished. Uh, currently cooling. Uh, so the chill has been sat in there for about 15 minutes now. We're down to about 38 degrees Celsius. Probably another five, 10 minutes at the most. <coughs> and uh, We'll be down to pitching temperature. So far, the quantities dropped down to um, 28, 24. We're about 22, 23 liters. Uh, I think once I take out the um, chiller and uh, the two hot bags that I've got in there as well, two, three hot bags I've got in there, um, we're probably going to get down to about 20, 21 uh, liters. Um, so once I've got all of this done. Um, once it's chilled down to the right temperature, I'm going to take a grab either with the refractometer or with an actual old-fashioned hydrometer. I don't know. Let's see what I feel like doing. Um, uh, it's pretty dark here today now. It's fireworks night, November the 5th in England. Uh, lots of fireworks going off in the background, which you can't hear now. They've all paused. But anyway, it's dark, so um, I will probably end up using a hydrometer instead of a refractometer. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll be back with a report round about pitching time. Let's take a gravity reading. So, uh, we're going to dump the hydrometer in and we're going to stop at 
So it looks like we've got a gravity reading of bang on. You can see that 1.060, which is, you know, four points below where I wanted my um, gravity to be. But hey, um, so it's going to be about 6%, which is okay, you know, for uh, an oatmeal stout. You know, it's pretty good. Uh, so, you know, I'm alright, I'm happy. It's not as much as I was hoping for, but I can't actually quite see that there, but, you know. It's okay. I'm all right. I'm happy. Okay, so here we are finally in the fermentation vessel. Uh, we've got my blow-off tube, which is going nicely into the bottom of a coffee jar. Uh, we better start sounding it. So I'm not expecting too much of a <clears throat> massive, uh, uh, like crazy fermentation. My last beer that I did was the brown ale. Um, we've got about 23 litres in that one. This one here came out at about 19.5 litres. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, aiming for, what I aim for? 26 litres in my, um, out of the, um, out of the mash tun into the boil kettle. Uh, once it boiled off for an hour, I'm left and I had some hops in there, which obviously ends up soaking up a little bit of the wort. So I've ended up with 19.5 litres. So I'm going to end up with some crap in here from the trub. Old troop. Um, so I'm going to end up with, you know, the fireworks in the background, they're going crazy. Um, so I'm going to end up with maybe 18 litres in this, which is a bit shit. I was hoping for a little bit more, so I've ended up with, you know, final gravity that's a bit lower than expected, a quantity that's a bit lower than expected. So this beer better be bloody great uh, for me to be happy with it. Um, you know, it helps me learn about what quantities I need to get into my boil kettle next time I'm going to be aiming for you know 28 litres into the boil kettle seems to be an amount that gives me a satisfactory quantity of finished beer um, so that's kind of probably what I'm going to be aiming for in the future um, anyway it's been a good brew day um, you know it's taken quite a long time it's six o'clock now I started at one o'clock so it's been that's not bad five hours it's okay um, but yeah I'm going to sit down put my feet up now Actually, I've got to clean up all of the um, stuff I used today. Um, so once I've done that, I'm going to sit down, put my feet up, and relax. Okay, welcome back. So as you see, brew day was pretty good. All went pretty smoothly. Um, here we are with the finished product, uh, oatmeal stout. Uh, it's been in the keg now for three and a half weeks, nearly four weeks. Um, it just looks the the bomb, you know, it looks really nice, really, really dark, beautiful head on it, really, really pleased with how it's come out. Um, the, it's got this lovely, dark, coffee kind of aroma to it, really, really pleased with the, the what I'm getting off of this one. It's like, it reminds me of a cup of coffee in the morning, you know, when you make a cafetiere and you've got that smell that comes off of the cafetiere, it's... It's got that smell to it. It's, it's just really, really nice. Really pleased with this. Um, you know, it, I can understand why they call oatmeal stouts breakfast stouts. You know, because it is. It reminds me of coffee in the morning when I'm having breakfast. Yeah, really nice. Um, so, you know, do a taste test. See what it comes out like. I've actually had quite a few of these, so I know what it tastes like. But for the purpose of you, I'm going to do a taste test now. Yeah, that coffee flavour really, really carries through. It's got this really nice coffee aroma to this. Really nice coffee taste. Back of the throat, really coffee kind of taste. And it, this chocolatey kind of flavour lingers on the tongue um, once the coffee flavours wash down the back of the throat. Really nice. Has a really nice mouthfeel to this. I think that's because of the oats. You know, it really... It's a really, I'm really pleased with it actually. You know, it's a really nice stout. Um, perfect for putting in the keg. It's not something that you would just want to stick in a bottle and leave to condition. You know, I've done a lot of kind of high gravity stouts. This came out at 5.8, so it's not high gravity, but I've done a lot of other stouts that you, know, you want to leave them in a bottle. You want to leave them to condition. This is perfect for whacking in a keg um, and just drinking you know, at your leisure. Um, but yeah, uh, really pleased with this. Great beer, I highly recommend it. I'll stick the recipe um, in the um, about this video blurb stuff down below um, so that you can get a link to the recipe. It was literally an impromptu, just kind of 
chuck a load of stuff together and it kind of worked as an oatmeal stout. Um, so yeah, I've stuck it on Beer Smith um, and make it public so that people can access it and brew it again if you want. Um, but yeah, I'd highly recommend it. It's uh, come out really nice. So anyway, <sighs> cheers. Oh, we'll cut this one up.